Good morning, my dear friends. Today we are celebrating Mass of Wednesday, the second week of Easter. In this Mass, we pray in thanksgiving to God for the many blessings He has given to us. We also pray for the many blessings He has in store for us. The beautiful song says, Give praise to the Almighty God. Let the sick say I'm healed. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the weak say I'm strong because of what the Lord has done. So we can also thank God for promises that are held in store for us. We pray for the many favors that God has done across the world, maybe not to us directly, but to many others. And so today I want us to go to God in gratitude and thankfulness. But I'll also pray in this Mass for people who have asked prayers for all of you. I pray for Tara Ryan who has asked that prayers be offered for her as she battles her cancer. Pray that God, the healer of souls and bodies, may be with her and help her heal. Pray for but Jolly Monjali, as he recovers, that God may continue to speed his recovery. And I pray for anyone else who may be in need at this time. May the good God, who loves us, who cares for us, be with you and help you overcome and succeed through all of your endeavors and challenges. Today we will sing the beautiful song, Table of Plenty. God invites us to this table of plenty. Come to the feast of heaven on earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table, where sins unseen as our friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. My dear friends, God invites us to this table of plenty where God will meet our every need, where God will give us more than we will ever need. Uh, the book of lamentation tells us that the favors and the blessings and the mercies of god never run dry because they are renewed every day and they are renewed to meet the daily needs of all of god's children so we gather here to to gather the, to gain the blessings that god has for us i invite you to, to just throw yourself to the mercy to the love and to the kindness of the almighty god in this table of God's love and sacrifice. We begin this Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves for this Holy Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Dear God, for the many times we have failed to see you as our loving Father and embrace you as our loving God, we are sorry. Lord, have mercy. For the many times we have been unable to love as you have commanded us, we are sorry. Christ, have mercy. For the many times, O oh God, 
that we have demonstrated on kindness and evil towards others. We are sorry. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mystery by which, through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again, we earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess in unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. My dear friends, our first reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison led them out and said, Go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison. So they came back and reported, we found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple, the temple guard and the chief priest heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in jail are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be on my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord hears the cry. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy. And your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard. And from all his distress, he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who fear him. And delivers them. Taste and see. How good the Lord is. Bless a man who takes refuge in him. The Lord delivers. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes might have eternal life. Alleluia. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you, with your spirit. 
Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is a verdict that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to the light because their, word, their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come towards the light so that their works might not be exposed. But whoever leaves the truth comes to the light so that his works might be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, this morning I'd like to reflect with you from the Gospel reading. This Gospel is so central to our understanding and image of God. Even though for so many of us, we still struggle to understand God as love. Because the only um, name that scripture constantly refers to with God, or identifies with God, is his image of father. And along his fatherhood is the love of a father. But it is, it is very hard for us to, um, to conceptualize God as love because we don't see him. It's very hard. That means because we are bodies, we are going to conceptualize God's love based on what we know. And what we know is from our experiences of people who play the role of father in our lives, of people we perceive as father in our lives. So our concept of fatherhood of God comes from the fatherhood of people in our lives, whether it's your, your biological dad, your stepdad, your adopted dad, or someone who just took you as, as a child and raised you. And, and how how we, where that concept we have of this dad definitely impacts on how we see God. That explains why most of us find it so hard to see a loving God who doesn't care to make us unhappy, punish us, do horrible things, and yet we still call him daddy. That is horrifying. For instance, you see him a child who is abused by his dad, abused physically, abused sexually, and yet because the child is helpless, the child still calls him daddy. That, that's not the kind of father God is. God is not the kind of father who will punish his children at the slightest provocation. That, that is not the idea of father that Jesus reveals to us. I know in, in historical tradition, we have the Old Testament reveal this idea of God. But when Jesus came, the reason why, one of the reasons why Jesus came was to make known the Father. Because I believe that the Father had been misconstrued, you know, um, misconceptualized by, by, by historical tradition. Where God was seen as this ravaging, terrifying, you know, angry. It's like one angry old guy who is angry at the slightest provocation. 
the book of Ezekiel tells us God doesn't take pleasure in causing us pain. He doesn't take pleasure in seeing the death, even of a wicked person. Even of the wicked person. God does not take pleasure in that. Because he's a loving God. Because his name is love. He loves us to repentance. He doesn't punish us to repentance. He loves, he loves us to acceptance. He doesn't terrorize us to acceptance. He loves us to an embrace. Yeah, and it's so difficult if you look at the life of Jesus. At every instant, all that he did was to demonstrate what love looks like. And that is, that is how he wants us to see. Because he says, to see me is to have seen the Father. That means, if you see me act, if you see me talk, if you see me do stuff, that's exactly what I learned from the Father. That's how the Father is. And, and but I, I I do understand how some of us find it so hard to see God that way. We are used to when someone is so powerful, super powerful, we see them demonstrate their power on the weak. They beat them up, they oppress them, they terrorize them, they they they, they have the final word. They don't listen to anyone else. So sometimes. We begin to develop. Since God is so powerful, we begin to see. We cannot understand how such a powerful God would have such a loving and tender heart. That's why He is God. The Bible says He is not like the Son of Man. He is God. And at all times, it's important for us to look at what happened on the cross. Scripture says here, For God so loved the world. Now, for someone to give away something they prize and treasure, something that they prize so highly, they don't just throw it away. They give it out of love. They give it for something very serious. And if God was willing to give of his only begotten son for you and for me and for this world, God must really be in love with you. Think, think about the kind of gifts we give to people we care about and people we love. We don't just give little stuff and stupid stuff. We give them things that we value. We give them things and we do that out of love. Now, you cannot honestly love someone and cause them pain and harm. You, you don't do that. There must be something wrong with you. The good news is there's something, there's something wrong. God, is not, God has nothing wrong with him. So if he says, I love you, that means I honestly love you. He will not cause us unnecessary pain and stupid pain. And I'm saying this at the background or the backdrop of some of our ministers who rush in to take, to take, to take advantage of every, every uh, event that happens out there in the world. I remember during the tsunami in Southeast Asia. There were so many pastors and men of God and women of God who just said, well, God is angry at the world and wow. they, ran, they wanted to run away with that, with that whole story about God. And I'm saying to myself, I don't know for those people how the God of love will be so angry, will kill everyone, both children, innocent, innocent children. And that's not what God does. God is not crazy. God is not unreasonable. Now, now, now tell me, you are all parents. Who among you, a good father, will, will, will do such a thing if this, those were your children? Who among you will do such a thing to your children? If all of Southeast Asia were your children, who among you will do that because you were angry as a loving father? I'm not, I know you won't do it. You will not do it. You will find another way to communicate with your children if you were angry or if you were upset with them. The same thing happened when the earthquake in Haiti happened. People said, yeah, God, these people are just terrible. God is just punishing them. No, God doesn't do that. I know how we as human beings have consistently made the effort to change God to look like us. God doesn't look like us. God created us in his own image, not the other way around. 
So we, we project our own image, the kind of things we will do. If I was angry, maybe I would do that. But that's not who God is. And so the Lord Jesus came to teach us. He says, if you look at me, look at me, look at what I do. That's how God does. I die for you. That's how what love does. Love sacrifices for the other. Jesus did not. Jesus, he, he gave himself for us freely. He says, is it me you're looking for? If it's me, let these others go. Don't, don't hurt them. Don't harm them. That's what love does. Love gives everything for the loved one. And that's what God is doing for us. In, in, in the spirit of this pandemic, there are people who are saying how God is now punishing us. God wants us to change because we are so evil. <laughs> I, I know there's evil in this world. But God is not going to punish us, punish us with a virus. A virus is a living thing. It, it's part of the ecosystem. Yes, like everyone else, the virus is also struggling to survive. It's struggling to have a life. So that's not what God is doing. What God does is he comes to our help in a moment where we face an enemy like this or something that, that threatens the safety of his children, God, God steps in as a loving father to protect us and to help us. Scripture says, for God so loved the world, for God so loved the world, so, now the emphasis, so, loved the world. That means the intensity of his love is such that he could give everything. He gave the only most precious thing. He could give anything and everything for you today. Not something he did today, right now, right here. He can do it again for you and for me. That he sent his only begotten son. And, and, and verse 17 says, For God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world. It wasn't about punishing the world. It was about loving the world, falling in love with what God has made. So I pray, my, my dear friends, and I, I hope that we will come to experience God as a loving father who doesn't react with, with such ir irresponsible and unreasonable anger. That's not who God is. It doesn't matter what people are saying. They may have to think about if that's what Jesus said, because when I read the scriptures, the entire New Testament, because Jesus came to reveal, he says, no one else before Jesus has said, look at me, and if you see me, you have seen God. No one else said so. Only Jesus said that. And that's why at all times, I want to look at what the Lord Jesus is doing and what the Lord is saying. He's the only one in the entire scripture who says, to have seen me is to have seen the Father. And so to see what I do means... That's how the Father wants me to show you who He is. May God who is love. May God who is kindness. May God who is goodness. May God who is compassionate. May God who is who who dies loving us. Just reveal how much He loves us. And He wants us to love Him back, not out of fear, but out of gratitude. And an appreciation of grace. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, what a loving God you are. I know it's so hard sometimes for some of us who may never have experienced real love to understand you as loving God. But today we ask that your grace may touch the minds and hearts of people who still struggle to relate to that concept of love. That they may experience the sacrifice of Jesus that we celebrate every day as the expression of your daily demonstration of love. We pray for the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have asked our prayers, people who have sent intentions, people who have requested we pray for them. We pray, Almighty God, that you may hear their prayers. Be with those who are sick. Be with those who have lost their jobs. Be with those who are struggling with bills. Be with those whose kids are, 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 are sick or 
are struggling at this time because so much is changed for them too. We pray, dear God, that you may help them manage whatever crisis they find themselves at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all those who have died. We pray especially for those who have died from this virus. We ask, dear God, that your mercy may prepare them for eternal peace with you, that you may forgive their sins. We pray for their loved ones, people who are grieving, people who cannot be consoled at this time because the grief is so hard. We ask, oh God, that you may visit with them and that your presence may calm their anxiety and comfort their grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our healthcare workers. Pray for our nurses. Pray for doctors. Pray for lab technicians. Pray for surgeons. Pray for researchers. We also pray for those who cooperate and want support healthcare workers, our police, our military. We pray for fire department, EMS workers. We ask, dear God, that this, the efforts of all of these people may not be in vain, that their sacrifices may reap rewards for the healing and health of our nation and our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, dear God, for our governments around the world. Pray especially at this time that governments may lay aside whatever differences we have right now and think about how we can face this global, this global challenge together as one people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering hunger and starvation at this time around the world. Almighty God, we ask that generous nations and generous people may reach out and support those that are struggling and are bearing the brunt of this moment greater than anyone else. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us and to pray for us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and they are our death. Amen. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruits of the earth and work of human hands become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Mm. But in this time, above all, to Lord, yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly host, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are playing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant is to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and brothers who have died. Remember those who are sick, O oh God. Remember those who are hungry. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Let us pray with confidence using the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles,
peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, from my heart to your heart and from the heart of God to you and your families and everyone you care about, may the peace of Christ be with you and abide with you forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold our Lord Jesus, the Father's love for us, the symbol of God's love for you. He takes away the sins of the world. He takes away the sufferings of the world. He takes away the sickness and disease of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us now lift our hearts and our minds and invite our Lord spiritually to nourish us, to nourish our lives, and to heal us by his spiritual presence. Most gracious God, May every heart, may every life, may every eye that beholds you this day and desires and seeks you this day be fully nourished by your presence, be fully nourished in your hearts and in your lives and in your spirits, O God. We ask that the effects of your presence in their lives may even be greater than they could ever imagine because you are a loving and compassionate and merciful God. For we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, we pray, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, I'd like to express my thanks to all of you for joining us and being able to participate in this holy mass for today where God reminds us of his true character and his true nature and his true identity that he is a loving God and I pray that you may experience God as a loving father as a caring and compassionate father 
who doesn't just wait with a stick to smack us when we do something wrong. Yes, he carries a bandage. He carries clean water to also clean our wounds because we are bruised by sin and restored by grace. That's the kind of loving God that he is. So, um, invite him into your life. You never, no one is ever too or too bad for God to love. No, there's nothing like that. No one is ever too sinful for God to love. No, there's nothing like that. That's what we do. Yeah, I would, I could dislike somebody because of their behavior. God doesn't do that. Scripture says He doesn't even take pleasure in the death of a wicked man. He doesn't. So may we experience the mercy, the love, and the compassion of the loving God. And just pass that on. And just do what he does. This world will be a better place, a much better place. So always I'd like to end by reminding you that God loves you very, very much. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We will sing the song Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Is the sceptre is the throne. Alleluia, he the triumph is the victory alone. Of the sons of this full Zion turn, the light came mighty flood. Jesus out of every nation, heart redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left in sorrow. Alleluia, he is near us, faith believes no Christian song. Through the clouds from sight received him when the forty days were old. Shall our hearts forget his promise?